I'm going to start some keyframing basics. First thing you need to know is that Boris is very different from After Effects. A lot of people use After Effects, they figure they can use Boris very easily and they end up getting uh, a little bit discouraged. But once you know a couple of things, you can really relate a lot of your After Effects knowledge to Boris Red. Boris assumes you're going to be manipulating keyframes. It assumes you're going to be adding motion to these video files. So whereas After Effects you have to push the button to let it know you're going to animate those keyframes, Boris automatically assumes you're going to animate them and all you really have to do is animate one keyframe in the middle of the default two or change one keyframe that's already there to make it go back to the keyframe that it was at. So let's take a look at these settings. I'm looking at video one, which is the soccer ball. The scale's 100, and these are the defaults, so they're going to be the same on both ends, both the beginning and the ending keyframe. I'm going to change one of these on the beginning keyframe. I'm going to change the scale to 50. And since it's grouped here, it's locked, it's going to change both of them at the same time. So now, at the very first frame, I have this video one at 50%. If I click on the last frame, and put my cursor there, I have back at 100. So all I've done is I've changed one parameter and now automatically red is going to fill those, fill those in for me and make the animation. In After Effects I would have to actually push the button or else it would stay at 50%. Not so with red, it just assumes you're going to be doing motion and this is how it does it. So I've only altered one value and I've made animation. That's the biggest difference between red and After Effects. That's it. If you want twirlies, here they are, right down here, transformations. You can uh, manipulate things just like you do in After Effects down here on the, on, the, on the timeline. You don't have to though. If you'd rather, you can just come up here. The controls window is always open and it's got a lot of cool stuff. You can uh, center your image back up there. So the basics of keyframing are just changing that one keyframe or the set of keyframes that you want, selecting an interpolation, and then watching it to see if that's what you want. Now I'm going to do a couple more things with the keyframes. I'm going to set on, uh, on the first keyframe everything is default except for uh, the scale which is set at 50%. I'm going to go to the last keyframe and I'm going to set this, this rotate Z to 2. So basically what I'm telling Boris is that by the end of this effect by this last keyframe, I want this picture, this movie, or whatever it is on this track, to have rotated around in Z space two full cycles. So let's take a look at it. And it's doing it. Very simple, as simple as that. At zero, it had no rotations. At the end of the effect, it has two. Boris Red is filling in all the rest. That's all you have to tell it what kind of interpolation you want and how many rotations you actually need and it'll fill in the rest. Now since we have a scale thing going on here too it looks a little bit different it's actually coming full screen and twirling around twice but again I've only changed two parameters so this is really fascinating that it's able to do that that quickly. I don't know of any other program that, that is that capable of doing something with so little input. It really does a good job. Now let's explore some of these other things. You've got trails. If you want to add some trails on here, I'm going to set this as a constant and we can see what that does. You see those trails? It kind of leaves behind a trail. It's kind of cool. And this will get slower and slower as more graphics intense it becomes, but you can preview to RAM. Through the preview window, you can preview to RAM or you can hit Control and Zero. Let's do that. It'll take a couple of seconds to cycle through the first time, but then after that we'll get a very good representation of what it's going to look like. And it's almost finished. There you go. Then I'll just keep going. Again, I've got this set in loop mode. We talked about the loops earlier. If I wanted to go forward, backward, it would do that. If I want to go one time through, it'll also do that. But that's pretty much all there is to basic keyframing. You're going to set a parameter at one frame, that's different from the parameter at the other and you're gonna let it go and it's gonna fill in everything in, in between. We talked a little bit about what you want to do if you don't want it to fill in everything in between. Let's say I want to tumble this just a little bit. No, you know what? Let's say I want to spin it just a little bit. 
Let's say I want to spin it like this about a 43 degree angle. But you know what? As it moves, I don't want it to flatten out so that it ends up flat. I want it to end up still at this 43 degree angle. What I'm going to do is come here to spin and choose hold. And that's going to hold that parameter all the way through. So even when it's up here full screen, it's still rotated on a 43 degree angle. And I'm going to turn these trails off because they're right now they're more just annoying than anything else. But let's check that out. See it's on that 45 degree angle and it doesn't come back full screen. Now let me go back here to this first keyframe and I'll go ahead and use a linear interpolation. And now watch what happens. It's actually going to go full screen at the end. You can see that it's stopping at the end full screen. And if you take it slowly here along the timeline you can actually see where it linearly changes from 43 degrees to zero. That's basic keyframing. Everything you want to do is now in the controls window under these tracks and the twirlies and in the keyframes in these timelines. If you'd like to make another keyframe it's very simple you put your cursor somewhere and you can go track new keyframe or you can just hit control and N and that new keyframe becomes the active keyframe. So that's all there is to basic keyframing. Now I encourage you to try this to just go ahead and start playing with keyframes setting different values and watching how the program responds between the two values based on the interpolation that you pick. Try different interpolations, see how they work, see what the best one is for you and get an idea of what each one of them does so when a customer comes to you and says hey I want it to do this you can already be thinking alright linear interpolation I think a couple of keyframes here and there this is gonna take me 10 minutes and you smile to the customer and say you know what I think I can do that it's gonna take a while but hey I'll give it a shot.